Welcome to this video on creating your first microlearning in Articulate Rise. Articulate Rise is part of the Articulate 360 family. So you may have heard of Articulate Storyline, which is a desktop app used predominantly on a PC rather than a Mac, because you need to partition it off if you do that, to create really interactive, engaging e-learning. Articulate Rise is the online version tool, so it's, it's got a little less functionality, but it does the job really well to create quick, accessible, interactive, responsive e-learning that you can share with your users, you can get onto your learning management system in a really speedy manner. So I'm going to show you how to create a quick piece of micro-learning so you can see how easy it is to do. What I'm going to do, I'm on the dashboard and I'm going to click on create new and I've got two options to create a full course with lessons or a micro learning. I'm just going to do a short, sharp course in this video. So I'm going to go for micro learning. And when I click on micro learning, it may take a few seconds to load up, it's going to give me a number of pre-built courses that I can use. These are all included in your license. You can review them. You can use them exactly as they are and publish them to your learning management system or you can go in and make changes and edit them to customize them but actually i'm going to go for a blank one because i find it easier to get started with a blank piece and there's nothing that really works for me so i'm going to go for blank micro learning and it'll just take a second to load and then it's just gonna give me a screen where I've got some settings, some options at the top. You can see I've got settings, publish, preview, etc. If I want to go back at any point in the top left hand corner, I've got the nine dots and that will take me back to my dashboard or my area where all of my e-learning is stored. And you can just see I've got a title section and then it's block based so I can add my blocks in. And I can change all of this obviously, but we're going to keep it super simple in this video. I'm just going to title my course. So my course is going to be setting up your Outlook calendar. So I'm just going to type that in. So what you see is what you get sort of screen. So whenever you type, whatever you type in is what's going to be published. You can see my names there. What I can do is I can hide that offer. So when it's published, no one will see that. But if you want to share the offer who's created it, and you can leave that there. I always take it off because it's not important who's created it. Generally in my team, the way I work is we all collaborate on the content and it doesn't matter who's created it, it's come from our team. So I can go into the settings and the themes and stuff and go and play around with that. But right now, I'm just gonna go in and add my first block. I'm gonna ignore that picture at the moment that's at the top and we'll go fix that a little bit later. So you can see you've got lots of different block groups. So you've got different things that you can do and I'm gonna create a nice simple course here with just a few blocks to get you started. So as you can imagine at the beginning of any course, you wanna put some text in there. So you can select one of the preset blocks there or you can just click on all blocks, which I generally prefer to do. So I can see all of them. And if I go up and click on text, I can see a preview of all the blocks and what it might look like. So I want a heading and a paragraph. And what I tend to do once I've done that is I tend to go in and add all of my blocks in and then I will go and do my edits. So once I've done the heading and the paragraph, I'm going to want a video. So I'm going to include a video in this micro learning nice and simple I've already created it you have to do that outside of Articulate Rise so to do that I'm going to go to multimedia and select the video option and you can see it's starting to build up behind you once I've done the video I'm going to then put a quiz question in to check knowledge check people have watched the video and all that great stuff so I want to make sure I've got a title for that quiz question because I always like to title before I move into something else. So in that one, I'm just gonna scroll down and find the heading option. And then if you look in my block library again, towards the bottom, you've got the knowledge check option. And this is where you can quiz. You can create different questions to check understanding. And I want a multiple response. So I'm gonna drop that in there. 
And that's my course pre-set up with blocks. Once I've done that, I now then like to go back in and edit that. But let's just close this block library down and have a look at what we've got. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you can see it a bit better. So now I've put some blocks in there. You can see in the top right hand corner, all of those options are now available for me to work with. And if I scroll up, you can see how it's starting to pull together. Now, before I go in and add that content, let's just go and have a look at the theming and the setup. So if I click on theme in the top right hand corner menu, then it's going to open up my theme. And on the left hand side there, I can select different options. So I've got a rise option. I'm going to change that theme and you can see I've got different options there to play around with. I'm going to put it on that one there because it's more relevant to what I'm doing. She looks like she's setting up her Outlook calendar on that image. Now you can obviously change that image as well, but you do need to set the theme and you'll see the slightly different fonts and things like that. So I'm just going to confirm. And then you can see I've got a number of options. So what I can go in is I can, now that I've set the theme, always do that first because it will change. If you go in and edit other things and then you change your theme, then you're going to wipe that all out and you're going to have to redo it. So you can see I've got different options. I can just have a blank background. I can have an accent color or I can have an image on there. If I go back for a second, you can see I've got navigational options. So I can either go dots, so it's one page at a time, or I can do a scrolling navigation, which feels a little bit like a web page. And that's the one I prefer, continuous. So I'm going to select that option and click on save. You can then go in and add a little bit of your branding in. You've got option to add a color, so a custom color. I'm going to leave it as it is for now. You can even upload custom fonts and you've got block sections as well. I'll do some other videos on blocks that you can add in to make life even easier for you to create your content. So you've got loads of different options there. I'm going to come out of this and just go back into my course. So it looks a little bit more like a web page now. You can see it's starting to come together. And now I just want to add my content in. So you can either just type this in or you can copy and paste and then edit when it's in there. And that's what I tend to do because I tend to create my storyboards in something else like Excel or PowerPoint and then just pull that information in so then I can just edit it within Rise. So that's what I'm going to do here. So let's go back up to the top and let's put in an intro. introduction and I'm going to go and grab an introduction and then paste that in using the normal copy paste process so select the placeholder text that I want to get rid of and just paste my information over it I might not look the way I want it to look this looks a little bit open but what I can do is I can select that text and you can see at the bottom there, I've got some formatting options. So let me put some bullets in there and it just sucks it down a little bit. And then I can obviously use my backspace button to get rid of any extra spaces. And you can see how really quickly there, I've got a nice intro. I know what I'm gonna cover. It does pick up, now I have, um, I have Grammarly on my laptop. So Grammarly is also picking it up because it's in the web browser. So it's picking up any spelling mistakes that it thinks are going on there. So I'm just going to move that out of the way for a second. So I've got my introduction, I've got my text, and I've also, if you notice at the bottom, I've put some instruction in there. So watch the video below to see how to set up your Outlook calendar. And that's what's going on in this bit. Now it looks like a bit of a video of a fun fair at the moment because I haven't uploaded my video file, which is what I'm going to do now. So to the left hand side, I'm going to go to edit. And then you can see I've got the video section and I'm going to go edit and I'm going to go find my video file to upload it. Wow. 
Now once I've found my video file, it may take a little bit of time to upload depending on your speed, your Wi-Fi speed and how big that video is. But just be patient, leave it on this screen and let it go through its full process to get your video uploaded. You may have also noticed when I selected replace video, it had manage captions option and you can upload captions as well into your videos to make it super accessible. And it may take a little bit of time to process that through as well. Now with the magic of editing, I've sped that up a little bit, but now you can see I have my video in there. If I go back to the edit option, that's where I can manage captions if I need to. And I'll do another video on how you get those captions in case you haven't got them and then how you upload them. So I'm just going to come out of there and you can now see my video is nicely in there and it will play when I click on play. Finally then, I just want to add my knowledge check to check that people have watched the video and they understand the content. Like I said, this is a super, super small course, just a quick refresher I want to share. So I always like to title this. A knowledge check. And then I've got a multiple choice question here. So again, I can copy and paste or I can just type this information in. So what I've done there is I've just copied and pasted so that I've got my question in there. And then I'm just going to put some answers in. But when I'm working with the answers, what I usually like to do is go to edit. And edit is always on the left hand side. So that I can tell the system what answers are correct because this is a multiple choice. And with some of the question options, you can also add in pictures as well if you need to for reference or to ask questions about. And what I'm going to do here is just put some answers in here. So set shorter meeting times. I'm going to add colour categories. I'm also going to set up focus time. Love it how it tells me if I've done a spelling mistake. I've done two in this one. So like I said, because I've got Grammarly set up, then this really helps me. And finally, I'm going to put a cheeky non-answer in there just to test. To make sure they're listening and they know what those key ways of setting up your Outlook calendar to be super productive are. So what you've got there now is I've got a question. I, in the question, I've put select all that apply. So the user knows that there might be more than one answer. And then I've told the system what are the correct answers. And the only final thing I need to do is decide how I want any feedback to show. So do I want feedback on any response? Or do I want to give them correct or incorrect feedback? So you can decide what works best for you and set that dependent on your question. It's a really nice little bit of functionality there. So you can see now I've got my knowledge check at the end. Got a submit box. And then if I scroll up, you can just see my course. Now what you can do and what I probably don't need to do that much on here is I can increase or decrease the amount of white space I've got between my sections. And I can also change the background colour and things like that as well. So you might notice just in the top right hand corner of each of these boxes when I hover or each of these blocks, you've got a few options. Now you can delete, you can copy or duplicate, you can move them up and down so you can move those blocks around. And you've also got a little palette for design. Now these are different dependent on which block type you select. But just for an example, you can see I've got a padding option. So padding is the white space at the top and the bottom. So it depends on how much space you want to put between your next block. Sometimes you might want to decrease that. Sometimes you might want to increase it to make it a little bit better. So you've got small, medium or large. And then you can click on the three dots and see exactly what the setting is. And for this block, I've also got the background where I can at the moment is set as light, but I can change the colour to be a little bit different to stand out. 
I can even put a custom colour and I can put an image behind there as well just to make it look totally different and you can do that with every single block type like I said you just might see something different so on the video one you've got a video width option and you can go from small to make it nice and sucked in or medium and large and you can see that I've got another bit of functionality I can set as well so have a look at each of the block types and see what design elements you can work with because you'll see they're all ever so slightly different Finally, if I look at the course one, the, the knowledge check one, it's very similar to the text one. But there are tons of other blocks to work with. I'll go through some of them in future videos. But in this one, I just wanted to get you started and show you how simple and easy it is to create a short course. And this is really now ready for me to preview, for me to get feedback on and then publish. So in the top right hand corner, I've got the preview option. So that's going to be one of your best friends. And when I click on it, you can see I've now got a preview of what this course looks like. What's really great about Articulate Rise is you can preview it using all the different devices and orientations that your users might. Because it's responsive, it will work on any of these and it automatically changes itself. So you don't have to build a course multiple times. So let's just go on the tablet and have a look at what my course looks like. So you can see now I've got my introduction and if I keep scrolling, I've got my video and then my knowledge check. It's nice and simple and easy. And you can see that on each option there and how it works. So go back to edit when you want to go back. And then you've kind of got two options really here. If you want to get someone to review your course for you, because it's all online, that can be done online as well. So if I click on review, what you would need to do is publish it to Review360, which is the, the review area. And then you can share it with your users to get some really nice feedback. And the last thing you might want to do is publish it to your learning management system, a web or a PDF. Or if you use Reach360, which is the Articulate Learning Management System, you can push it directly to there. So each one of these options is going to give you different bits of information that you might need to select. If you are publishing to a learning management system, please do check what you need to use, whether it's SCORM 1.2, SCORM 2004, or a different option on that list. You can find out from the team who manage your learning management system. And then you can just define what reporting you might need. And there's usually a couple of different options there. Top tip for me is I always put an exit micro learning link because I think it's quite useful. And there's nothing worse than being in a piece of online learning and then not knowing whether you need to click on something to close it or whether you're just going to close the browser that's popped up. But you want to make sure you've been added as completed on that course, especially if it's a long course. And sometimes you'll see more settings as well that might be hidden, that might be relevant to you. So that's a really quick piece of micro learning that we've just created. And we've changed a little bit of the theme in a little bit of the setup. And we've added some content in there. Have a go at that. Please do like and subscribe and let me know what videos you'd like to see me record in the future.